Okay, guys, God bless you. Welcome to This Is It Before the Fire. I'm testing equipment right now. I've driven over 2,000 miles, uh, roughly around 2,000 miles to get to my location. I told you that the Lord had me on an errand. <laughs> Every time he sends me on uh, a mission, I guess I'll call it, whether or not it was Grand Junction, whether or not it was Chinati, the miracles that went with those two that I just mentioned were ones to be written down in a book. They were so unbelievable. The the supernatural things that occurred on those other endeavors that were orchestrated by the Lord, they were proven that they were orchestrated by the Lord. There's no doubt they were orchestrated by the Lord because of the miracles that happened during the particular endeavor which he sent me on. Um, I'm here at my new location. Uh, it's undisclosed. Um, I'll disclose it tomorrow. I'm working on details on what I'm supposed to do. I have kept a running document of miracles. It's It started over a month and a half ago. Remember when the little, little Naz did the video? Y'all remember the little Naz video? I knew where I was going before that. I probably mentioned it, that it had been communicated to me. I had to go somewhere. The little Naz video uh, solidified that I had to do it now because uh, when the little Naz video came on, uh, it, it was such a confirmation. There's no way that I couldn't go. Tomorrow, you know what that is. I can't talk about it tonight. Um, I'm checking in. I'm just here in my hotel room. I've got all my gear. <laughs> I have so much gear. Anyway, so it's it's like Chinati, you know. It's like a Chinati thing. And the place he sent me, it, it bears witness to uh, the manifestation that it is. Um, when I went to uh, Grand Junction, let me give you an example. Let me just talk plainly. When I went to Grand Junction, Grand Junction, the great coming together, Grand Junction, great junction coming together. What came together in Grand Junction? Well, these two shipping containers that were miraculously, by some bizarre intersection of two people, Michael Spear and uh, his family offered that I could send the, my first container there because I, it looked like I was going to get in a property dispute where I live because of the estate that it was in and that I had converted the shipping container and I needed somewhere to put it because it looked like I may be in a property dispute and I didn't want them to take this little jewel of a container that the Lord had told me to do. I didn't even know why he had told me to do it. He just told me to do it. And so uh, Michael Spear said, well, you can put it up here if you want. And I had only talked to Michael maybe three times a year at that point. And I, we didn't have an ongoing, you know, every, uh, constant communication. So anyway, so uh i said all right and um then the lord communicated to me it needed to be on a base that was concrete solid rock four feet by four feet by four feet a cube well when it was offered to me to put the shipping containers in grand junction uh, he was thinking about his driveway to put the shipping container temporarily <laughs> that was his plan. But he was at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Little did he and I have any idea of the supernatural significance of what that would mean. And so I said, all right, well, you know, uh, that the Lord had communicated to him that it had to be four foot by f uh, four foot by four foot, like a cube, a solid cube, all fours. And that's when, and I said, you know, the Lord communicated to me that I needed to put it on that base. And he was thinking his driveway. <laughs> and so when I told him that, he was like, do you remember like two or three years ago, me and my family sent your ministry a donation of $444. And I was like, that's crazy, 444. Because, and um, I was like, that is so strange. That's just bizarre that, you know, four by four by four is the base. And so he said, yes, you may build that in my yard. Now, he didn't understand the significance of his address being 154 Rainbow Drive at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Now, listen, Rainbow is the covenant the Lord God made that he wouldn't destroy the earth with water again. 
Well, don't forget, I'm the before the fire guy that the Lord's going to destroy the earth with fire now. That's what, that's what I'm doing. I'm waving the banner going, guys, guys, it's going to destroy the whole place with fire. You better get right with the Lord right now. And here's all the data to prove why he's going to do it. Have you been watching my ministry? The largest uh, church in the world is a snake wearing a crown. The serpent is wearing a crown. The serpent race has taken over the world. So that's why he's going to destroy the world with fire. And I'm the guy to draw attention and to prove it. I proved it. I laid bare Satan's hidden kingdom. That's what I did. I exposed it completely. And the way I exposed it was I turned everything right side up in this world that we're in because it's all upside down. Now, the corner of Rainbow and Casimir was so profound Rainbow is a covenant that the Lord God made with Noah that he wouldn't destroy the earth with uh, water again, but the next time it would be with fire. The word Casimir means covenant of peace, proclamation of peace. Well, I had no idea anywhere in the world that this container was going to go just to get out of the property dispute. But the one place out of every address in the world it ended up at was 154 Rainbow Drive in Grand Junction, the great coming together. That's impossible. That's just insane. And so I heard the Lord very clearly tell me, Jonathan, look up the meaning of the name Casimir. And I'm going to pull it up for you in just a minute. And then I heard, look up the meaning of the number one, because it's at 154. Look up the meaning of the uh, number one. And then, and the way he told me to do it was type in the Bible meaning of number one. And then I, he told me, type in to Google Bible meaning 54, not Strong's meaning, by Bible meaning of 54. And when I did it, it brought up Isaiah 54, oddly enough. And I thought, well, that's weird. So I started reading Isaiah 54. Let, let, let me show you what happened. Watch this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the past events that the Lord had me do very quickly. And I'm going to show you the supernatural stuff that's in, that was involved. I didn't bring my little rock that was split in half from Chinati, but that video is on YouTube. But let me show you Grand Junction real quick. So in Grand Junction, the two shipping containers represent one representing the Bride of Christ, the other one representing the the Judgment Seat of Christ. So the Judgment and the Bride coming together. And I thought... That's just so strange that two shipping containers, the first one was sent to Grand Junction. The Lord told me to put another one in its place. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. If the thing, if the property was going to go into this dispute, why would he have me put another one there? That was just the strangest thing. And then he told me to convert it. And then he told me to send that one to Grand Junction, which I did. Let me show you the meaning of one in 54 and the meaning of Casimir. Just watch this. Okay, so I'm going to do just the quick version right now without all the imagery from the locations. I'll do that on, on, on my follow-up video. I'm just going to give you some bullet points on this video because I'm just, I'm checking equipment and all that, and I'm just getting started. So here we go, look. So it was at 154 Casimir. The Lord said, look up one, then look up 54. I want to show you something. The number one is only divisible by itself. It is independent of any other numerals, yet it composes them all. It symbolizes in the Bible the unity and the primacy of the oneness of the Godhead, what is known as Shema. Shema O Yisrael, the quote of verse 4 in Deuteronomy 6.4 that is often used in Jewish prayer service, uh, services attest to this fact. So the number one represents the unity between God the Father and his son Jesus. And Jesus, by his singular sacrifice, has made possible the forgiveness of all our sins. He is the one mediator, the shepherd in the life of a Christian. Okay, that's one. Now let me show you. I want you to leave and look at, I want you to look at this search right here. All I did was type in Bible meaning of 54. Look, look right up here. Look right up here. Okay, now, I mean, if you think about that, that is very strange that to type in, that, to, that I heard the Lord just say, type in the Bible meaning of 54. These days, the Lord has taught me to read a language that the enemy uses using the Strong's Concordance, where they use a word that's delineated by a number in order to hide the word in plain sight in front of you by simply switching the word for a number, like the number 
The number three is Abaddon, Angel of the Bottomless Pit. A lot of times they'll just use the letter C because it's the third letter of the alphabet in order to delineate Angel of the Bottomless Pit. He's taught me to read their language fluently. That's what it means, be wise as a serpent. I read their language. Now watch. This is different, and this is before I, the Lord had taught me to read their language. And so he told me, type in the Bible meaning of 54. Now watch this. You want to see a miracle? You want to see a miracle? Watch this. Don't forget. The two shipping containers went to the corner of Casimir and, and Rainbow. Okay, Rainbow is a covenant that God made with Noah. Casimir means proclamation of peace, like covenant of peace. And it's at, and the, they're at 154. Now watch this. I showed you the meaning of one, and then I typed right here. You can see my... Bible meaning of 54 right here. I'm proving it. Isaiah 54. Sing barren woman. Okay, and I'm like, okay, so the Lord tells me to read Isaiah 54. Now, get ready to freak out. Because most people would never understand that this is a, a representation of the regeneration of all of us. This is a regeneration of all of us. Now, watch. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear... Uh oh, that did, did us not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou, that's weird, it just keeps pumping out. That's very strange. Hang on. Let me see if I can refresh it. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to highlight it. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. So it's, it's, there was no travail with child for more are the children of the desolate which is our our race than the children of the married wife which is the other race now watch enlarge the place of thy tent let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations spare not lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for thou shalt break forth on the right and the left think of the two coming together i always do this right and left the good and the bad coming together as one. Now watch this. Thou shalt break forth on the right and the left hand, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. I got to quit highlighting. Hang on. There we go. Fear not, thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. He's talking about us. For thy maker is thine husband. Now we're talking about the, the our maker is our husband. Husband of who? The bride. Watch. Is thine husband. Watch. Thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer. So he's talking about his children, the ones he bought back. Thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. Okay, guys, the reason I'm emphasizing certain words is because this trip he's already told me, showed me the gathering together, the in-gathering together is about to happen just i have like i said i have a whole folder that's followed me on this trip already what you're seeing right there where i'm going gather thee that's because he's already communicated on this trip that that's part of what's coming so just watch with great mercies i will gather thee in a little wrath i hid my face from thee for a moment like your time here but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. Okay, now everybody, I'm going to pause. Where are the, where where'd the shipping containers go at the Grand Junction event? They went to Grand Junction, which means the great coming together, which is about to happen. All of us that are born again believers, we're all about to come together. The resurrection's about to happen. The, the bride's going to leave. The resurrection of the dead, they will all happen in the dispensation of time that they're allotted to happen, each one in its own dispensation. But just watch. This is all coming together. Just watch. 
For a moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. What was that? What was that swear? Do y'all know? It was a rainbow. That was the covenant. The, the swear. He swore I will not do it again. You, so where is the where are the shipping containers? Where do they get sent to? The corner of rainbow. Oh, so that promise he made was a rainbow. That's why the Lord told me to look up 54. Watch, because the, the containers are on the corner of rainbow and Casimir, which means covenant proclamation of peace. Watch, watch this. In a little wrath I hid my face for thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, rainbow, so have I sworn I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. And the Lord says, I will have mercy on thee. So, so, you're telling me that it's possible that at every address in the world, the two shipping containers that the Lord told me to convert, he told me what to put them in, what they represented, the bride of Christ and the judgment seat of Christ. He told me to, you know, I didn't know what to do with it. Michael Spear offered his place. It happened to be that address, 154 Rainbow. And then the other one ended up going there as well. And that was a Grand Junction event where the Lord told me, you're skydiving into there with a parachute that says V for vengeance. It makes a big X with the right side up, upside down V, like an hourglass, big red. And it says V for vengeance, right side up and upside down. And it happens to say, in this scripture, 54, rainbow and covenant of peace. And that's where the containers went. One, the Lord thy God is one. And 54, I will, as I swore to Noah, I would not flood the earth again with a rainbow. So I have promised you a covenant of peace. Look, it says it right here. My kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed, said the Lord, that hath mercy on you. Now watch. Let me show you, if you don't believe me, Casimir, right there, Polish meaning proclamation of peace. Okay, so what you're looking at right here is a mirror, um, an impossible miracle. I had to go through city planning in Grand Junction. We had people trying to stop it. We had people that were very influential with the city trying to blackmail us to give them $40,000 just to set a container down in a yard so we could get the permit for the second one. They had us over a barrel and uh, the Lord walked me through the steps in order to do it and we got it and it, they're there. And then I went to Grand Junction and I skydived into that location and we had a big get together at that place in Grand Junction a lot of people were asking me to baptize them and I just said guys I just can't start baptizing people I'm sorry you know a lot of people wanted me to baptize them and a thunder shower came over and rained on everybody in the backyard and it wasn't raining on the street when people are saying Jonathan would you baptize us are you kidding and it rained with the sun out and then it was gone and everybody got wet, but not soaking wet. They just got boom, big drops. They were big drops. I remember, I was like, whoa, bap, 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 bap. and it was like, and then it was gone. Everybody got baptized. It was a sanctifying event. It was a, it was beyond miraculous. At the corner of Rainbow and Proclamation of Peace, where the Bride of Christ container and the Judgment Seat are sitting next to each other. Ready for this? That base, 4 by 4 by 4 you know what 444 is in the Bible? Perfect love. The rock foundation that those two share, that they, they share one corner where they sit together, is perfect love. 
The Lord said, look it up to Michael. Michael called me up. He's like, have you looked at, you know what the meaning of 444 is? I was like, no. He's like, it's perfect love. Alar. The foundation is perfect love. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then on the way home from the event, I told Siri, hey, Siri, take me back to San Antonio. I ended up going through some super bizarre way. I was like, I know Texas pretty well, folks. I was like, where the hell am I? And I was outside Amarillo, and uh, I got a couple hours sleep and bit by a brown recluse on my arm. And then I got up the next morning, and I think it was the next morning, and I, Siri took me to Eden, Texas. Yeah, Eden, the next morning, Eden, Texas. And I heard Siri say, Eden's like 26 miles. I'm like, what? Eden? And I heard the Lord say, stop at the city limit of Eden and take a picture in front of city limit, which is really weird. I mean, how bizarre, like you hear, I was on the phone with Kat. It's documented. It's on YouTube. I document everything to prove it. And I was driving and I, and I was talking to Kat and then I, I, I see Eden. I'm like, that's weird. And then I hear the Lord say, stop at the city limit and photograph it. I was like, that's so weird, Kat. This is what the Lord's telling me to do. And I did. I pulled over and I took a picture and the population of Eden, I forgot what it was, but it's in the show notes. I save everything. And the Lord said, look it up in Strong's in the Bible. You know what it meant? Sanctified, consecrated potter's clay. You know, now the Lord's let me prove that Genesis 2 and the Lord God formed Adam from the clay as a potter from the dust from the clay. Sanctified potter's clay. <laughs> It was a sanctifying event. All right. So anyway, without going into all the miracles of the Grand Junction thing, which were many, that's where the little girl, Lexi, that was legally blind, you know, her, her and her grandmother drove, I think, 2,000 miles to get there. And uh, everybody kept telling me, Johnny, you need to lay hands on this little girl. And I was like, guys, that's not how it works. Huh? I do not get to pick and choose who I lay hands on. Otherwise, I'd never have a kid in the hospital. But the Lord told me, this is what I need you to do. Uh, but no, 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 wait, many people came and asked me to do it. And I said, no. And then I said, I, if the Lord wants it done, it'll happen. And then I turned around and I literally almost barrel over this little girl that's looking up at me. And I look down and I'm like, hey, how's it going? And she's like, hi. And her grandmother says, this is Lexi. We drove all this way. She's legally blind. My whole body just lit up, just lit up. And I was like, oh, wow. Well, Lexi, I'm going to lay hands on you. and God's going to do something. Now she's got 2030 vision, I think. Something like 2030, which is almost perfect. <laughs> it's like, okay. So anyway, I laid hands on Lexi. Okay, so these are the miracles that follow the ministry. I'm just kind of giving you a little dose because now I'm at what I believe is my final location. And tomorrow when I let y'all know what it is, y'all are going to freak out. You're not even going to believe it. Now, let me give you a little caveat. Sometimes the the reason the Lord sends me places and he kill, has me just kind of is because the enemy always shows up. The enemy shows up and the enemy likes to show up like they're, oh, God sent me. No, I've had that happen so many times and I squeeze the sponge a little bit and I see that, you know, as soon as I squeeze the sponge, what's the, the, the individual that said God sent me, they start cussing and freaking out. And I'm like, oh, really? So God sent you, huh? So the Lord has already communicated to me, I will send nobody, nobody. So if anyone ever tried to show up at this event or like Chinati or where I was going, I would know that the enemy sent him right out of the gate. I'd be like, no, he already let me know he would send nobody. So if you're sitting here saying God sent you, it's not my God. It's some other one that you're listening to. Just being straightforward. You know me, guys. I just straight at you tell you exactly the way it is. Okay, so now, without going over the whole Chinati thing, because y'all remember Chinati, the skydive into the canyon. I was in a little, uh, I was in a barren desert. I was out in West Texas desert. It was just desert. And there was a canyon that was so unforgiving. I mean, I literally almost, I almost went home that day because it was such a treacherous jump. And he wanted me to land in this canyon. 
He showed me right where to set up my LZ. He walked me down a canyon, and I, he told me to go back to my room and read Isaiah 25, and I believe Isaiah 43. And then he told me to go check on my LZ. And Chinati is like a little Garden of Eden in the middle of the desert. It's the craziest thing. Go look it up online. Chinati, C-H-I-N-I-T-I. It means gateway. I think it means gateway. And I go to Chinati, and he ha he walks me down this canyon, Chinati Canyon, and he tells me, right here is where I want you to set up your LZ. And I sit up a 20 by 20 tarp in the middle of this dried riverbed. And then I go back to my room, and he says, read Isaiah 25 and Isaiah 43. And then after I do it, he walks me back to to check on the LZ. And I'm like, I, I just put it up a little while ago. I'm going to be jumping the next day. And the Lord tells me, go check on it. And I walk down this creek bed. This It's a giant canyon. Well, when I say giant, it's a big canyon. But it's totally unforgiving. If you mess up, you die. And as I was walking down there, all the rocks are just... I just stopped and looked down. And I heard the Lord say, pick up those two rocks. Y'all have seen them on videos. And they were they were this far apart. They were this far apart. There, guys, there's hundreds of trillions and trillions. It's not just a couple trillion. It's trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon thousands of miles, square miles of rocks. And I look down and the Lord tells me, pick up those two rocks. And I was just like, pick up those two rocks, pick them up. And I picked them up. By the way, this is 100% no line, 100% true testimony. And I pick up these two rocks and the Lord says, now put them together. <laughs> well, I can't. Okay, well, uh, let me go to the hardware store and get some glue or, I mean, put them together. What does that mean? And I hold these two rocks and I just, and all of a sudden I start turning them and it's the same rock that's been cut in half. Do y'all know how insane that is? That's so far off the charts. I mean, especially since my ministry was to show y'all what being on the rock is, Matthew 16. Upon this rock, I will found my church. He's talking about him being the base and Peter being the first little rock. And Peter was crucified upside down and he had the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So here's, here's what being on the rock is. This is the system that you're trapped in, right side up, upside down. And then if you have the keys, you turn the other one up. And boom, the two come together as one. That's what getting saved is. That's the, the methodology of it. That's what it looks like. You got one eye up, one eye down. When the other eye gets turned up, that cuts the line to the pit, to the, the worm that's feeding off you your whole life. The Bible, I will restore the years the canker worm is in, has eaten. Because we're being eaten by a bug from the pit every day of our lives. The Lord has let me search out what was unsearchable. I have searched it out. The Lord has revealed it. It was unsearchable. Do y'all remember Odd Future Wolfgang Kill Them All, the clothing line? Do you remember the black hoodie that had different uh, different colors for the letters, you know, Odd Future Wolfgang? It said Odd Future and the letters were color coded. And the Lord told me, take the letters that were the same colors and put them together and then look out what alphanumeric numbers those were and go look them up in Strong's. And it meant, to search to unsearchable to find out what is unsearchable and that's what i did that's what the lord allowed me to do yeah so all these things that he's let me search out he's done in a physical manifestation in this dimension and he's using me in order to do it and to fully expose Satan's kingdom, which is what kills the enemy. That's what slays the enemy. The enemy has been cloaked in total darkness. He's, Satan's the prince of darkness. But when you've exposed his kingdom, you've destroyed him. So that's what the Lord used me to do, just to destroy his hidden kingdom. That was my job. All you got to do is turn it up and you'll see the truth. The virgin, turn it the other way, is a dead sheep. So the truth is the virgin equals dead sheep, which is you're the sheep. All you had to do was find out who the sheep is. How's that all work? Go look at Arby's. You know, Arby's, we've got the meat. Do you think that's a cowboy hat that says Arby's? No, it's a penis, and it's a dead sheep. Look at the B. You know what? Let's just do it real quick. Watch. So do y'all think that's a cowboy hat right there? Is that what you think it is? 
Do you think this is a cowboy hat right here? Just look at it. Let me tell you some. The worst fifth grade artist could do a better cowboy hat than that. That's not a cowboy hat. That's a penis. That's the tip of a penis right there. And when you rotate the whole thing sideways, you see the you see the the B, you see that open space? That's the eye of the sheep. And then that's the eyebrow over the eye of the sheep. And that's the ear of the sheep. This is the ear of the sheep. Just rotate it 90 degrees this way. So look at this one. There's the sheep. There's the eye of the sheep. See the eye right there? Eye of the sheep. There's the mouth of the sheep right here. Mouth of the sheep. Rotate. It's a penis. So if you think Arby's is a cowboy hat, you're not supposed to be here. It's a penis and a sheep. We got the meat in more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the last video I did, I was just like, I just mocked the crap out of them. They hate it when I mock them. So anyway, so see, I exposed, we're living in a place where you can go through a drive through that's called Arby's and the big sign out front is a penis and a dead sheep. What's the largest altar in the world? Oh, it's a penis and a dead sheep. Where the hell are we? <laughs> What's going on? What are we in penis sheep land? I mean, how do you get out of here? <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah, how many times have I shown you this stuff? Okay, so it goes without saying. Uh, the Lord has used me to destroy the enemy's kingdom. Destroy it. It's what I've done. I've laid it bare. I've opened it up. I've said, here it is. You're looking at a freaking penis and a dead sheep. That is not a cow. Look at it. it do you think that's a cowboy hat? Here's another thing it is. It's also like a like a cowboy's rope. Like a rope with the the lasso on the ground, like a snare. See it? There it is. It's a rope. It's a rope. It's a snare. It's a there's the eye of the sheep, there's the mouth of the sheep. It's also a penis. It's a glon's penis. There it is right there. Just rotate it. I mean, it's no brain. No brainer. No brainer. I've seen one. Mine's way better looking than that, but still. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's just like, uh, get me out of here. So, yeah, Grand Junction, 154, Shema Israel, the Lord thy God is one. This is before I ever did that. His purpose was to make one new man from the two. The containers are at 154. Shema Israel, the Lord thy God is one, 54. Rainbow and Covenant of Peace. I wonder what the odds are. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what the odds are that it's right here. For it is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn rainbow, that swear right there, that was a rainbow. That's what the swear was. I'll put it in the sky. It's called a rainbow. That, as I have sworn the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. Neither would I remove my covenant of peace. Covenant of peace means Casimir. Huh. I wonder what the odds are that two shipping containers are at the corner of Rainbow and Covenant of Peace. And it just happens to be one in 54. <laughs> it's like wake up yeah this is the lord god speaking through a an, an individual that's what's that's what you're seeing i mean it took me a while to be able just to handle this but it is what it is so anyway so now i've done the grand junction event i did the chinati event the Lord revealed to me Parthenogenesis out of the Chinati event. He showed me the two become one. He revealed, you know, I set up the LZ in the in the riverbed. I went and read Isaiah 25 and Isaiah 43. It says, "I will make uh, streams out of dry out of the desert," and and the, it was a dry riverbed canyon before I jumped. But when I left Chinati to go get my airplane, I had to drive a solid hour through the desert to go meet a pilot on a run a runway strip out in the Presidio. It was like a one strip, nothing. <laughs> and I, I went there and the plane flies in. I jump on the plane and I take off. When I left Chinati, this giant thunderstorm came in and just poured cats and dogs down. And there was a flash flood where I set up the LZ. Well, the LZ should have been washed away. It should have washed the whole thing away. But I had staked it down really hard. 
and put boulders on the sides of it. And the LZ went through and the big the big X that was in it, one exact half of the X was filthy dirty, the red X. The other side with the clear stream was perfectly clean. Okay, that's impossible. That is not even possible. The LZ was there and one triangle that was red was filthy and the other side that had the clear stream on it was perfectly clear. Do you see the spiritual significance of that? One race is spiritually clean. It's been washed clean. And the other one is filthy dirty, which is the serpent race. One gets cleaned, one stays dirty. There it is. The building that I was in in Chinati was made up of stones. They were this big. They were solid like river stones this big. And they were just stacked on top with a little mortar in between all of them. And when I, it said 1937, right where you walked in the door, right on the, the, the porch landing. And when I was going into my room, one of Danny, who's one of the caretakers, he says, oh, that building you're in is really special building. That one was split in half. You know, like us, we've been, we've been divided. We're a kingdom divided. So he goes, yeah, that, that, that building you're in was split in half on both sides, right up the side. And he said, it was way beyond my, my capability. This company came out and they put these big metal brackets on the corners of the building and they put these big cables on it. And I'm sitting there just going like, <laughs> I was just like, and he just offered the information. <laughs> he just comes out and starts telling me, I'm like, what? And <laughs> And then he goes, yeah, they put these big metal brackets on the corners of the building. They put these big cables on it and, and they cinched the whole building together. Okay, ready? Then they lifted the whole building off the ground. It's solid stone. It's solid rock. Remember, upon this rock, I will found my church. He lifts up, they lifted up the whole building and then they put a rock foundation down and they put down a rock foundation made out of solid rock, concrete. And then they set the whole building back down on a rock foundation. And I'm finding a rock in the, in the creek bed that's been split in half. And the building's been split in half. The LZ was split in half. You can't even think this up, folks. This is one for the books. When Danny told me that, I was just like... And then 1937 was written down in the cement. Like, you know, someone, a little kid takes their finger. It says 1937, I think. That's like the the commercial with flow, protection, flow, protection, progressive, you know, progressive, like they're progressively taking over the human race. Flow, protection since 1937, for those of y'all that know what I'm talking about. The progressive commercial with flow. It says flow, protection since 1937 makes a scorpion stinger. They're talking about flow of semen. That's what they're talking about. Since 1937, what does that mean? Let's look at 1937 in the Strongs. Let me show you. So imagine you're me <laughs> and you haven't lost your mind yet. And you're like, yay, I haven't lost my mind yet. I don't think. Okay, so desire, lust after, I long for, covet, lust after, set the heart upon, which is what God's angels did. And that's why they got in trouble. And that happens to be written on the rock foundation, 1937, on the building that was split in half. I mean, are you catching all this? There's this giant female whiptail lizard going right around my cabin. And I hear the Lord. I know what a whiptail lizard is. They're, they're really fast. We used to call them bullet bullet lizards or racers. They're the, one of the fastest lizards I've ever seen. I used to try and catch them when I was a kid. Did you know they're capable of parthenogenesis? Yeah, a, a female can self-fertilize have a clutch and they're all, and they'll be female and those females can change their genders to male and start mating and producing more like a serpent race getting started out of one lizard and the lord showed me that's what happened with the human race in genesis 1 let us create man in our image it was parthenogenesis it was a serpent race and it multiplied and multiplied and then that was the trap for god's angels yeah, you know, Lucifer, you can have all this. You can be co-creators. Yeah, you won't die. Big lie. All these things are proven. The largest church in the world is a snake, and I can prove it all day long. The Lord showed it to me 
the mouth of the snake is a vagina. That should change everybody's world right there. That should change the entire world right now. That just just knowing that. They worship the virgin, by the way. Why do they worship the virgin? Well, if the virgin is the serpent race that got everything started, why wouldn't they? That's where they get all their food. Because the serpent race eats angels. Hunted for dinner. YG, you're so cool, man. Oh, uh, they're busted. So that's what the Lord used me for was to lay bare Satan's kingdom. That's what I did. Because they, you know, they, they count on that you're going to be scared of them. I'm not scared of them. I mean, I have a healthy respect for their evilness, but hey, you know what? I have a healthy respect for the one whom I serve that he can whip their ass any day of the week. So, okay, now. <laughs> Okay, so now I've kind of made my point, right? Grand Junction, Janati, and all the things in between and all the supernatural information that's been delivered with over 2,000 videos from this one ministry. That's insane. Now I'm at the final place. Now I'm where I believe, well, this is the message. I know what the message is. I could tell you the message right now. I can tell you what the meaning is of where I'm at, just by where I'm at, it speaks for itself. It totally speaks for itself. So I'm going to let you all in on where I'm at tomorrow. I need to set up some logistical things on, you know, whether or not I'm going to be skydiving into some part of this place or what exactly, you know, the plan is. But everything that's with me already speaks volumes of what the message is to deliver to y'all. Because I'm a delivery boy. I'm delivering what God delivers to me, to you. That's what I do. I'm like, okay, you want me to show them what? Okay, I'll show it to them. And I show it to you. The Vatican's a saint. Largest altar in the world's a vagina and a penis. It's a dead sheep. It's a bunch of angels melting into semen. Well, that's all right there in the Bible. The spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. That's what the largest altar in the world is. It's a bunch of Elohim angels melting into semen. Wow. Well, who's? what's it inside of? A snake. Because the serpent, Adida's original... They're the ones that started the whole thing. It was a trap to feed a bunch of bugs that are underground feeding off us. Oh, like the Bible says, I'll restore to you the years that the canker worm is eaten because all these things that you thought were really great, you know, the bait, like when you go fishing, you use bait. Well, you know, it looks really good right when you grab it, but then you find out there's a hook in it. It's really bad. And that's what the human race was set up was for God's angels. And then you get trapped with an angel and a demon and a host body, and it destroys you your whole life. And unless you get converted, you go to the pit. That's the mystery of everything. Now I've told you the mystery of everything. And I got so many pictures and so many images and so much proof that anyone that would try and come against me is demonic. Or they're still living in their sin, or they're a demon, or they're just like Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's it. Those are the options. But now those of us that have been converted and we have eyes to see, we're pretty excited because you know what it means. The end of the world's coming. And you know, people are like, oh my God, how can you, how can you be excited about that? Well, let me, let me explain that to you. Because the Bible says whoever makes themselves a friend of the world makes themselves an enemy of God. It says it. Whoever makes themselves a friend of the world makes themselves an enemy of God. Well, doesn't the Bible say love your enemies? It does. Doesn't the Bible say on John 3, 16, which is my birthday, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. The word begotten means born. So there's only one son born into this place that belonged to the Lord God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Do you know the word begotten means born? So if, if you think you're born and you're God's son, you're wrong. The Bible says we have to be adopted. We've been, ad we've been adopted into God's family. We get adopted when we get converted and we get adopted into God's family because we are the, we're the devil. The flesh is the devil, by the way, the flesh itself. That's why Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. And the word likeness is not the same word as Genesis 1. The word Genesis 1 is Salem. It means representative figure, especially an idol, vain show, phantom image. The word for Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. The word likeness there is ikone. It means resemblance. It's very different. And the Lord's just made me a master of his word. And so I can prove it. <laughs> so all glory to God. 
I'm just a sold out servant. That's it. I'm willing to do whatever he asked me to. So now it's time to whoop some ass, <laughs> which is yes. And I think the Lord will do that obviously for us because he's the one that did it for Moses and he does it for all his servants like Gideon. Remember Gideon? I think 30,000 guys has to go up against all the, uh, all the guys down in the valley. Oh, remember Gideon had to go up against all these guys that were there to kill them. And it says, and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for the multitude. Look at that. Look at what the word grasshoppers is. Locusts from its rapid increase. And their camels with, were, out, were without number. And so what did Gideon have to do? Gideon was told to get rid of almost all his troops before this. I think 30,000, everybody that doesn't want to fight gets to go home. Go home. Whoever drinks water the wrong way, <laughs> you got to go home. And then what was he left with? 300 guys? I think it was 300, right? If I remember correctly. And then they got to go up against all the guys in the valley, Amalekites and uh, Midianites, and their their numbers were more numerous than grasshoppers. And it says locusts, because think about the pit, locusts in the pit, but they're masquerading as human host bodies. They they were more numerous than grasshoppers. And so that was uh, just letting you, that was like showing you what they really are. They're really attached to the pit. And he's got to go up against all them. And then what does he have to do? He's got to break some clay pots, light some torches, and blow some trumpets. Like, hey, we're all going to die. This is going to be great. Y'all break your pots, break your clay pots, and then light your torches. And then all the grasshoppers, will, all the all the Midianites, oh, yeah, they, they won't come kill us. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's like, what? That's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. So he did what God said. Now, don't forget, I'm going to give you a little hint about maybe what's coming. So. We carry around our treasure. The Bible says this treasure that we have, this this light that's in us, we carry around in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels, clay pots. Well, what happens when the rapture happens? What do you think happens? Nobody really knows for sure. We could all fall to the ground dead. The, you know, uh, Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. Everyone says, no, he was taken up in a chariot of fire. No, in a whirlwind. Man, who knows? So, but our clay, our bodies are clay pots. What's in us? The light. So isn't it interesting that he breaks clay pots and then they light torches and then they blow trumpets and all those guys start killing each other. Remember what I said? Remember what I just said? It's going to be part of my testimony on this trip. I have so many miracles to share with you guys. Y'all are going to freak out. Y'all are going to be like, yeah, how does Cleck sleep at night? I don't. No, I'm just kidding. I sleep really well. Yeah, but sometimes I don't go to bed till late. But yeah, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I got so many miracles to share with you guys. You're going to freak out. The end of the world is here. I'll look you in the eyes. The end of the world is here. The serpent race has taken over. Barack Obama is running the presidency from from the wings. He's taken over. You know, do y'all think Biden's running things? <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure he is. This whole vaccine thing, COVID-19, Abaddon sheep slaughter. That's what it is. It's Abaddon sheep slaughter. They're just, this is a way to call the sheep. Trump was a good way to identify every political opponent. It's here, folks. You know it's here. Either you know it's here or you don't. That's why the Bible says in Revelation, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I am who I said I was. Go read Revelation 3, the letter of the angel of the church of Philadelphia. The Lord gave me the key of David. He opens doors that no man can shut. He opened the door for me to go out the night I got saved. I just happened to be with a girl named Eleuthera, which means licentious freedom. I mean, you know, no big deal. Nothing coincidental about any of that. My name just happens to be 
mean Yahweh is given a bell ringer. Yahweh is given a town crier. Uh, the word, let, let me, let, uh, and it just so happens that my sunglass company said was come out of the darkness into the light, which just happens to be what Paul said that the Lord told him he was going to call people out of the darkness into his light in Acts 26. And that, even I believe even in Acts 26, let's see, in Acts 26, I believe it even says Paul is a town crier, same as my name, watch, let's see, I think so, I believe so, Acts 26, I have a lot of Bible that goes through my head because I, I deal with a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff that the Lord leads me to, let's see, and we, when we were all fallen to the earth, fallen uh, is a representative, you don't say when you get kicked off a horse that you were fallen to the earth, by the way. That was the Lord showing us that we were all fallen to the earth. I heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you? He said, I am Jesus, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. See, Yahushua, which is the self-existent eternal Jehovah that saves. That's the name, Yah, Jesus. Anyone that says Jesus is Zeus is a lunatic. They know nothing. This is Greek, okay, Greek. You see Greek, Iesus, Iesus. It's from Hebrew origin, 3091. It means Yeho, right there, Yeho, which is the self-existing eternal Jehovah. Read it right above me. And then 3467, saved. Self-existing eternal Jehovah, saved. He said, I am Jesus whom they persecute. Rise to stand up, ready? To stand up. Ready? Up. Repetition, intensity, and reversal. Up. The reason there's a drink called 7-Up is because the number 7 in the Bible, like I've taught you now, 7 means destroy. Destroy up. See, they want to destroy up in you. If they destroy uprightness in you, up, then they've gotten you to their side. That's why there's a drink called 7-Up. I mean, that's just all there is to it. It's that simple. Okay, here we go. Rise and stand upon thy feet. I have appeared to thee for this purpose to make thee a minister, a assistant, officer, servant, let's see, and a witness. This is really cool. A witness, a martyr, because we all give our, we, we hand our lives over. And a witness, both of these things which I have shown you. Let's see, these things which thou hast seen, and those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Now here you go. To open their eyes. So to open, look, to open up. See, to open up. See, to open up their eyes and to turn them to revert. Literally or figuratively, look to turn about, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan, which is darkness, to God, which is light. So, that's the same as my tagline on my sunglass company, where I'm falling upside down, <laughs> to turn them Okay. Anyway, so for those of y'all that know me and y'all know what's up, y'all know who I serve, right? Okay, so now here's here's what's going on. I you know, I know that where I'm at, the message is going to speak for itself. It will it's already done it. So I don't have to worry about that. Um y'all know that y'all know that the night I, the, the day that my, my dad died, my dad, the, I woke up at seven in the morning. I had a dream and in my dream, I've had these dreams several times in my life. And that's a certain type of dream. When it happens, it's real. And it happens. It's like a foreshadowing. It's like a dream that ends up coming to pass. Now I'll just real quick, because I had a dream about where I'm at. I recorded it on my phone. I've documented everything. When it happened, I woke up. The Lord told me, record your dream. Make an audio recording of it. I audio recorded it. And then it, the Lord told me to document the time. It was at 4.16 a.m. Lord told me that, I look up 4.16. Then he told me, you woke up at 4.15. I screenshotted 4.16. And then the Lord told me, 
Oh, and then at 4.17 a.m., I got a text message. I got a text message at 4.17 a.m. It said Xana Voyeur, and then there was a number associated with it. And the Lord told me to look it all up. Xana means destiny. Voyeur is one who watches. And then the number that was associated with it after it means to lay bare and completely expose. And it was a dream like the one I had that, that my dad died. So let me tell you that real quick. So the day that my dad died, I had a dream and I woke up at 7 in the morning. But in my dream, I, had, I was in paradise and I walked into a bungalow on the beach and I walked in, my dad was laying on the floor just, and he was dead. And there were five guys standing around my dad, like in a semicircle. They were very directly placed in a semicircle. And I walked in and I looked at my dad and I, it was like, I caught these guys. And I looked down at my dad and I look at these guys and I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, okay, you know what? You, 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 and you. I was letting them know. I was like, you, 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 and you. Like, y'all are done. Isn't it weird there's five guys making a semicircle around my dad? It's all about this five and five. And I looked at him, and I was like letting them know, y'all are done, man. And then I just walked out. I started walking out this side door, and these guys, like, they were freaked out. They're like, oh, my gosh, he knows. He's going to get us. He knows. And I, I wasn't afraid of them. I just walked out the side door, and then I started ascending into heaven, and they were all like, oh. And, I, and then I just sat up in the bed. I was like, oh. And I was like, what the hell? And then I got my phone because it was, it was one of those type dreams. And so I, I grabbed my phone and I called my dad on his home phone. He has one an answering machine, and uh, it was about seven thirty. And I said, "Hey, Dad, I I was just checking in on you. I know you weren't feeling so good the other night. This was December twenty seventh, a couple of years ago." And I said, "You know, uh, just checking in, seeing uh, how you're doing. Um, I'll, you know, I'll try you on your cell phone." It was really weird that he he didn't answer. He always gets up pretty early. He's up by seven always, and so. I called his cell phone and it didn't answer either. And that was weird. And that's when I was like, okay, wait a minute. So I, I left a message on his cell phone too. And then I, I thought, you know what? I'll just call the home phone again. I called his home phone again and I, the answering machine came on. And if you're at the house, you can hear the answering machine. You can hear what anyone's saying over the answering machine at your, at his, if you're at his house. And so anyway, I said, Hey dad, look, I, you know, I called your cell phone. I haven't heard from you. I'm a little bit concerned, so hey, if you don't, if I don't hear from you in like a few minutes, I'm just gonna head over, you know, like let me know if you get this message, so I don't drive all the way across town. I said, so you know, if you get this message, let me know because I'm a little concerned. And I hung up the phone. Within a couple minutes, my phone rings, bring, and I pick up the phone. Hello, and the housekeeper Carmen, she's like, oh my God, Jonathan, your dad, your dad, get over here, he's on the floor, your dad's on the floor, get over here. And I just said, call 911, drop the phone. Broke a bunch of traffic laws, hauled ass over to my dad's house, and I walked in and I walked to the bathroom. She's like, "He's in the bathroom." I walked in the bathroom. My dad was dead on the floor, exactly like my dream. Okay, so when I have one of those kind of dreams, I'll tell you another one real quick. I was at Lou's sister's wedding in Montana. Uh, there was, we we're staying at the Gallatin Gateway Inn. It's like an old timey hotel where there's rooms upstairs. It's like an old cowboy stagecoach type thing. Uh, there's about six rooms upstairs, maybe six to eight rooms upstairs. And there's two common bathrooms. So if you need to pee or take a shower, you go down the hall, you, you go in, put an occupied sign on it. You go and do your thing and you go back to your room. Well, I was having a dream that I was watching some guy plunging a knife into a girl and I saw him and he's gonna he's gonna murder her and I'm like no and I was trying to stop him I was running towards him and when I when I was screaming I was like no and then I woke up and I was looking in a mirror at myself and I'm like so my own voice was bouncing off that mirror just no and I'm like Ugh. and I wake up I was I had sleepwalked to the bathroom I was naked I was soaking wet with sweat and I had witnessed a murder in my dream and I woke up naked screaming into a mirror in a common bathroom at three in the morning. 
And I was like, ah! and I was like, what the hell? And so I just, and this is before I got saved. My dad's thing was after I got saved. So there in Montana, then, you know, when I woke up, I was just like, what in the hell's going on? And then I opened the door. I mean, I'm naked in a common bathroom. I have no idea what time it is. I just go out of the bathroom. I knock on the door to the hotel room when I'm in. And Lou opens the door and she's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, I have no idea, man. I had this dream. And so I go inside and I just tell her about this weird dream. And then, uh, you know, the next morning I go downstairs and and there's a big common area with a big bar, like old timey type deal. And uh, there's a guy back there and I go, hey, man, can I ask you a question? And he's like, yeah, I go, has anyone ever said this place is haunted or anything? And he's like, oh, yeah, man, are, we, are you kidding, dude? There is a girl that was murdered here on her wedding night. We have, I'm like. <laughs> and in my dream, I'm trying to stop a murder, a guy's murdering this girl. And I was like, okay, things are really weird. So anyway, I have these dreams occasionally. <clears throat> I documented one on this phone. I know the spiritual significance of it already because the Lord's already let me know. It doesn't mean that anything's got more has to happen than has already happened because it's already played out, but I documented it. I'll just prove it real quick. Okay, so I, li I like proving stuff. You know, I like, I want you guys to know this is 100% truth, all of it, always. So watch this. Let's see, where's my, uh... here we go. So, April 25th, uh, there's a 32 second and a 21 second. Uh, April 25th, 25th 2021. Uh, I'll just give you part of it. Hmm. Hang on one sec. There we go. Sorry, the volume was all the way down. I'm not going to play the whole thing. This is going to be part of which I'll get tomorrow, but so y'all know it's true. In my dream, I was confronted by several individuals with guns. Okay, so, see, I'm just letting you know. This is all documented. Everything I'm telling you is documented. So, anyway, I recorded that when it happened. Uh, let me show you to prove to you at 4.16 a.m., the, the, and then the Lord told me to look up 416 and 415. But let me just show you what happened real quick. So, here we go. So, 416 a.m. April 25th. And then you can see at 417. AM Xana Voyeur 1566 it for, so while I'm while I'm documenting my dream at 4:16 AM you're looking at it at 4:17 AM look at the time 4:17 AM I get a text message from Xana Voyeur BV 1566 the lord told me look up Xana look up Voyeur and 1566. Let me show you what that means real quick. I was like, this is getting really wild, guys. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, here we go. Watch this. To expose, to lay bare. So... What I've done is... I've laid bare Satan's kingdom. That's why I can show you the largest church in the world that says it's Christian is really a snake, which means it's really Satan's church, right? Well, most churches are Satan's church, most of them. It's very hard to find one that's not because that's the first place the Lord sent me to was all the churches so I could see what hypocrites and liars they were. And then he showed me Ezekiel 37, I believe. Let's see, Ezekiel 37. Woe unto you shepherds. 
I like I like just checking my mouse sometimes. You know, if you guys, I I like doing it with you guys. You know, on the on the on the vid, it's kind of like hanging out with you. You know what I mean? It's just like, hey, let's just do this. So let's see. Um, okay, what was that? Hang on one sec, guys. I'm I'm having a little glitch, and I'm I'm afraid to stop the program because if I stop it and I start again, I'm, I'm having a problem where it's changing the like if I try and re-record if I try and stop the program see where I was at and then do an addition to it it messes it up so instead of risking any of that just to kind of keep yakking what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold on to what I got and then I'm going to talk to you guys about what's you know what's happening right now and how maybe some of you guys can jump in and help so I had mentioned to you guys that we have this place called the Ark. And when I say we, it is something that I helped jumpstart. It's something, it's the place where I went and laid hands on the lady that had cancer, Karen Sullivan. Her husband was not a, a born again believer at all. As a matter of fact, he had to endure listening to me in the background like many people do that are in, you know, if, if you're a listener of, of Johnny... <laughs> Sometimes there'll be somebody in the background that does not want to hear Johnny. Well, he was one of those guys. And he, he had to sit there and listen to me in the background for, I think, five years. And his wife ended up with colon cancer. And by a bizarre set of circumstances, the Lord sent me to her. And um, she, she ended up um, getting healed. And he ended up getting converted. And he, he started a place called The Ark. That's what the Lord put on his heart to do because he's got some property outside Houston in the woods. It's really beautiful. And he had, you know, some space that uh, they called it the man cave. It was a, it's a little building and I went over and I helped him convert it. I put in a bathroom, used construction skills and helped him jumpstart it with a little financial help and to get things going. So he would have something that you know the Lord had put on him to do, and he had the he had the place to do it. So now that place is just starting to just it's starting to take off. And when things happen like that, well, then you have to be able to keep up with the resources and the needs. Some, but we already ran out of places to put people because it it happened pretty quickly. Um, but uh, we had some people offer to. Uh, put like an RV there. And so I've talked to Jim, you know, Jim and I stay in contact and I do go there occasionally. He's a friend of mine. He's helped me, you know, with some stuff I needed help with. And I've gone out there to help him. I think I've been there like five or six times now, but I'm going to be stopping through there on the way back from my trip. And, uh, we may, you know, I, I need to talk to him. We may have a little get together there. Uh, we may, uh, I need to just talk to him and I need to pray about it. But one thing I'm trying to do is to help him uh, fund feeding people at the ark and to help him fund just kind of keeping the thing up and running. And it's, it's, it's pretty self-sustaining right now already. It's already pretty self-sustaining, but there was an influx of people. And that influx of people kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And so I'm trying to help him. So if anybody would like to help, let me tell you the things that would be beneficial. One thing that would be super beneficial is if anybody has like an old little trailer, someone has already offered to help with an RV to put there. So, you know, that if there's transient people that can come in here and there, I don't know how long this whole thing is going to run with me. Because where I'm at speaks volumes about where we're at in the whole grand scheme of things. We are at the end of the world. I guarantee it. There's no doubt about it. The Vatican's a snake. Okay, I'm exposing, I'm laying bare Satan's kingdoms. That dream that I had and the Lord sent me out here, I knew that I may be coming into... I'm willing, I'm willing to come to whatever's waiting for me. Okay. I'll just leave it like that. So, but Jim, 
uh, and the ARC, they can use some help. They could use some help. People have offered time, you know, people have offered skill sets, and we're trying to use what's available uh, and what's practical. Like, we can't have five guys that are carpenters all show up and say, hey, man, I'll help you build some. Cost of building materials in Texas are, are crazy right now. So it's like, uh, you know, to build something right now also takes time. Where he's at, um, you know, temporary stuff is great, like RVs or anyone has little trailers, something little. Uh, if somebody had something big, even it would be a possibility. I know that this weekend, it looks like someone's uh, donating an RV, and that way some of the other people that are already going there, but it's running out of room again already. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, a, it's called the ARC, Angel Refugee Center, A-R-C, Angel Refugee Center. And it's for people like myself, like, you know, my parents and everybody rejected me. They just, they kicked me to the curb and left me homeless with nothing. The Lord's the one that, you know, put me back on the, you know, just where he wanted me. But there's other people that are in different stages of their walk. And um, we're trying to sort that out for who who we can. It's not like everybody go to the ark. It's not like that at all. But it doesn't mean we can't meet there like Grand Junction. And I'm going to talk to him about that and just, you know, see what the possibility of that is and when. Um, where I'm at right now, I don't know if I'm going to get to leave, to be honest. I just, I never know. But if I do get to leave, um, I will be going through there on the way home and stopping and checking on things. And then also, it's only four hours from San Antonio. And so it's a place that I will be going to check in on until things end, because this is the end. I'm an end of the world harbinger. Jonathan means Yahweh is given Click means a messenger that rings the bell and uh, gathers the church. And that would be the Church of Philadelphia. And so, because we have the key of David, the key of love, the key of love, and we know the truth. Because you've kept the word of my patience and you have not denied my name, I will keep you from the hour of testing. That's the Lord saying, I will keep you from the time of the great tribulation. And that is the bride of Christ. People that think they know what the bride is and you don't know what Revelation 3 is, you don't know. I'm sorry you don't. And I, I challenge everybody, come up with the data that the Lord showed me and try and come against the word that the Lord showed me. Try. <laughs> it's like, good luck. You can't do it. Because everything he's given me is proven out to be true. So anyway, so back to the ark. I'm trying to raise a little money for the ark, raise money for the people, for their food. Uh, like I said, it's pretty self-sustaining right now because the people that show up, it's not just, oh, we show up and, you know, we to take care of us. They they go do you know stuff like DoorDash and they go do their thing. It's really just a place to stay, uh, where there's people that are like-minded believers that know the truth, and then we know where this is all going. That's what it is. We know where it's all going, and um, that you know people are in bad bad situations and they had to basically flee. And so we ran out of room. We had to tell people already, no, we don't have any more space. And so anyway, we're trying to expand already. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so anyway, uh, and, and now, again, I've never, ever, ever attached myself to a thing like this, never. But the Lord sent me there, and he sent me there to lay hands on his wife, to take Jim some information uh, which got him converted. The Lord sent me with some of the stuff that he had me decrypt. He told me, go to Houston, show this to Jim and show him Genesis. And I did. And after I did that, and I can't tell you about it. He can, and it's very personal, but the information that I showed up with was so supernatural involving his life that it helped him open the door and get saved. So anyway, so now we're we're trying to get that thing up and rolling. So here's the thing. I'm going to be out of town till And yeah, I have I have my uh I have my Let's see. I will not be available 
till the 25th. I'm at my location now, but I have another route and between uh, between going to the ARC, I just have another route. It's uh, personal and it's family related and I don't share my family related stuff uh, online at all because it's just, it's not right. So anyway, I'm going to go take care of that and then I'll be going to the ARC and it would be super awesome if somehow we had you know, anyone that if you have an old trailer, or you have a little one, uh, just someplace we could put somebody and we can find a way maybe to get it there or something like that. And if anybody wants to jump in uh, financially, that would be awesome. Here's the thing. If you're going to send something in the mail, wait till the 20 till the 20th before you send it. Do not send it in the mail till at least the 20th of this month. Let's see if I'm still alive. <laughs> okay. I'm not joking. Let's see if I'm still alive. And so if I'm still alive by the 20th, then yeah, then go ahead and send it. Uh, if you're a PayPal person, if you use PayPal, now would be a good time to do it because I can jump in and help fund them right now from where I'm at. But I can't go to a P.O. box, uh, you know, cash a check and then send it to help them I can't do that till after the 20th. So, okay. Now, let me show you how to do that real quick. And don't forget, tomorrow night I'm going to crack the lid on where I'm at. And I'm going to share with you all these miracles. It's unbelievable. So, here's um, the P.O. box. And this is after the 20th. P.O. box. And that's if I'm still here. <laughs> it's we, I still don't know. <laughs> Anyway, and it doesn't mean uh, any of us will be here, by the way. None of us might be here. I don't know. You never know. J. Cleck, P.O. Box 91281, San Antonio, Texas 78209. Now, some people are like, start asking, hey, uh, there's different email addresses that people have used um, for PayPal. And let me show you what always works. It comes with this right here, jk at jonathancleck.com right here. So if you click on that, I think, yeah, you can just, there you go. Anyway, my, uh, my email that's associated with PayPal is, so if you click on this right here, see jk at jonathancleck.com. So if you go over there and you just click on that button and then, you know, you, you log in. But you can um, you can send it there, and then I can I can try and help, you know, some of these people. We actually had people flee from another country that that they had to get out anyway. And I'm trying to help and feed them. They they left everything. They left everything behind and had to run for the border. Okay, and it's not Mexico. So, um, and, you know, not that that would matter. But anyway, so tomorrow tomorrow i get to share with you so many miracles it's so crazy <laughs> anyway and i love you guys i wish everybody could be here with me i wish it was like grand junction and, and i wish my life was more uh i wish it was more where i was with you guys like i was in grand junction to me grand junction was so awesome i got to talk to people you know touch people see your faces you know everybody like connect and, you know, get to hang out a little bit. I wish I had like a month just to hang out with everybody. But, man, I'm telling you, look at what the Lord's got me doing, guys. Y'all would not believe the hours of work I put in. I'm not, I'm serious. You would not believe my workload. You'd be like, how do you do it? I'm like, uh, <laughs> the Lord. He finds a way for me. All right, so tomorrow, by tomorrow evening, um, I'll let you know where I'm at. I won't be here very long because, again, like I said, the Lord told me I will send nobody. But, you know, just like my dad, the dream, the Bozeman, Montana dream, I had a dream that was just, it was totally real. But I, I like I said, I already know the significance of it. It's biblical. It's what the Lord's going to have the rest of the world deal with, so. So, I was in quite a mood on that last video, wasn't I? 
I was just like, I've had enough. I was just like, that's it. It's a joke. So have you guys, okay, now let's just talk. Have you guys just watched, just go back and watch the Ian, just do it. Just go watch the Ian Bud Light commercial yourself. Just look at it. What the hell else could it mean? Go watch the Maserati commercial. Go watch the Smirnoff commercial. Just go watch all these things I've shown you and just ask yourself, what else could it possibly mean? Ask yourself this question. What else could it mean that the Vatican's a snake? What else could it mean? Ask yourself that. Why is the Vatican a snake? Why is the largest altar in the world a vagina and a penis? Why is there a big dead sheep melting uh, with all these angels melting in semen? Put a Y in front of that. Well, W-H-Y. Why? 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 Why is there a clothing line called 400? 400. Why isn't it 400? For hunted, hunted for dinner. Who are they hunting for dinner? Who's hunting us for dinner? Remember Lady Gaga? My performance is about another race of beings being birthed within the human race. Ask yourself this question. Why? What's happening to the other race? Is there another race? So you're a new race. What about the other race? What happens to them? See, do you ever sit down and just... Ask yourself these questions. Well, Lady Gaga said her performance is about a the egg and the rebirth. is about a new race of beings. Well, what happens to the old race? Oh, COVID does. And then a chip to follow. And then 5G. Turn it all on. Go watch Kingsman. The church scene. The reason they did the Kingsman scene. Go watch the movie Kingsman. The reason they did it in a church is because it represents the church killing itself. Oh, because see, we self-destruct, all of us. All these angels are just self-destructing in their, in their trap. It's a self-destruction trap. That's what the earth is. So anyway, the Lord let me lay it bare and prove it. And then I get to share with you all the miracles tomorrow, which is just going to be like, y'all are going to freak. All right, try and remember Jim. What y'all can do is, you know, y'all can send it to me. I'm going to try and form some kind of a, you know, I, I got to be very careful about the way I do things. You know, I can't. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's just one of those. How do you keep, you know, keep that thing together and separate at the same time? It's a little tricky, but I'll tell you what, if you guys support the ministry, what I'll do is I'll make sure I support them, which is what I've been doing. I went and jump started it and that's the way it got going. It was the Lord sending me, and it was Jim's idea what the Lord put on his heart, but then the Lord sent me to jumpstart it, and now it's up and running. So, bam. All right, guys. I love you guys in Christ, and uh, the end of the world's here, and we should feel really good. One thing that crossed over in my brain, which I want to reiterate. Remember, the Bible says, whoever makes themselves a friend of the world makes themselves an enemy of God. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, that's when I think it was going to glitch. It means the only born son. The word begotten means his only born son, that whoever so believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, God loves his enemies, right? But if you make yourself a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Doesn't that make the entire world an enemy of God? Just do the logic. Whoever makes himself a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Just do the math. Stop sometimes and ponder these things. And the scriptures are perfection. Okay, guys. Hopefully all this equipment just worked. <laughs> do, you know how many, do you know how many times I've done this and I'm like, all right. I'm getting, then I go click and I'm like, oh. No, I've had it happen after doing three hour videos for you guys. And it's just like, and then a couple of times I've looked down. I'm like, no, the red button wasn't on. <laughs> sometimes I press it. Sometimes I go boop and I'm like, it, and I don't get a visual and it's not on. So I'm trying, I'm trying my hardest. I love you guys. We're going to be okay. I, I'll look in the eye. We're going to be okay. We're better than okay. We're eternal beings and we've been bought back. Our dad, our dad bought us back because we became children of the devil and he loves us so much. 
that he buys us back on a cross. It's the greatest love story ever. Doesn't get any better. Have you ever felt like no one loved you? You got to be crazy. This world doesn't even know what love is. That's why 1 Corinthians 12 or 1 Corinthians 13 tells you what love is. Love is not sex. Love is not lust. Love is not, ooh, she's so hot and she digs me. That's not love. That's not it. Go read 1 Corinthians 13. That's what love is. Okay. And substitute the word love with Jesus. Okay? Try it. All right. I love you guys. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. All right? Peace and grace. God bless you guys.